Hey y'all, my name's Megan. I'm a homeschool mom of two. And today I'd like to share with you guys some resources I've gathered for our September unit study, which is going to be a deep dive into the world of fungi. Or as Alexa told me to pronounce it, fungi. Basically, we're going to be looking at mushrooms. So I want to share with you guys some resources I've gathered, some activities that I have planned, and basically just give you, you know, some ideas for some things that you can look at and study this fall. Now, I don't use any all-inclusive curriculum for my homeschool. We've actually just pulled subject curriculums and we're using those. So to try to create a theme or an overall narrative to our homeschool year, I've introduced unit studies. These are not like unit studies that I have a big master plan for. I haven't whipped out my calendar and written down what we're going to go over each month. Instead, I'm really allowing them to develop organically and taking my cues and hints from the kiddos on what they want to learn about. And recently my kids have been crazy about mushrooms. So I thought, okay, this is what we're going with. I got on the ball and have put together some things for us to take a look at the wonderful world of fungi. Before we really get into the meat and potatoes of what I have gathered up to share with you guys today, I just want to give you some advice. If you are wanting to form unit studies for your homeschool with your kiddos, really try to make sure that you are looking for things that are not only what they're going to be interested in, but what you as the educator are interested in learning about, or maybe it's something you're already passionate about. Because if you can kind of marry those two things, what your kids are interested in and what you are interested in, the passion that you as the educator are going to bring to that unit study is what's going to be the spark, right? It's what's going to allow you to have the energy uh, to make that enchanting, to make that unit study a little bit magical. Um, I think that a lot of times as home educators and as parents, we have a tendency to lay down our identity, lay down our passions in the name of some, I don't know, mythical childhood we're trying to create. And I actually think that if we allow ourselves to be awesome human beings as parents and as people, that really just heightens the stakes uh, for how awesome we can make our kids' childhoods, and especially when building our homeschool, um, you know, dream or vision. That's my little PSA for the beginning of this video, I guess. Mushrooms are not a new interest for my family. We've been budding mycologists for about three years. But that interest level has really been limited to hikes or walks. I'm gonna share a picture of our first mushroom hunt that we ever took right here. Ta you can't see it from this angle, but I'm actually massively pregnant with my youngest child, PJ, in this image. But we started to get interested in mushrooms when we moved to Indiana. I'm from Texas, y'all, and you know what? I had not spent a lot of time in the forest, right? Like an enchanting looking forest. We had woods or some scrub or something like that, but we did not have um, kind of this outdoorsy landscape that I've experienced here in the north. And when we got in those woods, one of the first things we started looking at was mushrooms. We do forage a few species and eat what we find, but we've never dedicated ourselves to the study of mycology, and that is what we are going to be doing in this unit study. So the thing that has really fueled or reignited our love for mushrooms was that we watched as a family the Netflix documentary Fantastic Fungi. You guys, it is awesome. It kept the attention of my kids almost the entire time. Beautiful imagery, lots of detail, and interviewing intensely interesting individuals, including Michael Pollan, who is one of my favorite authors. He has written some of the most influential books on my life, including, I, I think it's called How to Change Your Mind, which I read a few years ago when it was released. It had a huge section on mushrooms, and I love that they brought him in to speak on this topic. It is narrated by Brie Larson. She has a gorgeous voice. And we were so 
into it. And really my oldest, Winnie Mae, who's seven, she could not stop talking about mushrooms and was actually going out in our yard and collecting whatever she could find. Uh, you guys, I swear, if like our house was searched today, you would think that we were, I don't know, storing illegal mushrooms because Winnie just has these little plastic sandwich bags with her little finds and treasures in them. Um, you guys, I swear, that's not what's happening. I'm just trying to encourage my littlest to be a naturalist. Well, she's not my littlest, my oldest to be a naturalist. So I don't know. Sometimes you got to get weird when you're homeschooling. By sometimes, I mean most of the time. We will probably watch this documentary again towards the end of the month in our unit study, and I highly encourage you guys to do so as well. It's also an awesome place if you're not sure if your kids are really going to get hyped up about mushrooms. Start here if you already have a Netflix subscri subscription. You guys, I'm so excited, I can't even talk. So if you go and watch that and your kids aren't into it, then find something else that they are. But I'm just telling you, it's a great place to kind of um, launch this unit study. Anytime that I do a unit study, uh, the first thing that I do is create our unit study board, which is just a bulletin board or cork board that hangs in our dining room, which is an area we do a lot of our homeschooling. Raise your hand if you homeschool your kids um, at the dining room table. Me, that's me. I do that for sure. So I try to keep it really simple. And usually I go onto Etsy and I just look up unit studies that are about our topic. A lot of the unit study programs that you will find on Etsy are geared towards younger kiddos, but that's where I find some really fantastic art because I just use that bulletin board as like, um, a place to spark imagination. You know, the kids pass it every single day and the better the art, I just think it gets their little minds percolating on the topic. So I will link below the unit study that I purchased for our mushroom unit. I know for a fact, I mean, it was not more than $10. Automatically downloaded it, print it, laminated it, cause I'm like that. And I'm going to take it and put it up on our bulletin board, okay. So this is just the main illustration that I got. It's like a dozen useful um, fungi and it does go over some that are in our area. So of course we have the morels here in the corner and that's really a spring favorite. Most people who have foraged are super familiar with uh, morels, but our favorite, which actually isn't on here, is chicken of the woods. And I'm gonna go over that a little bit in depth here in a minute. But I just thought this was really fun um, for getting them used to what we're going to talk about. And it has their common name as well as their Latin name for each of these species of mushroom. This particular unit study also came with a printable set of ID cards for mushrooms. And I printed these and then I just ran them through the laminator, hole punched them and put them on a ring. I would not say that these ID cards are um, ID worthy for consumption. Obviously these illustrations Okay, are not ID level, but it does have a lot of really interesting information about each of these species, which are fairly common mushrooms. And I just think the kids will have a good time taking them out and looking for these guys. Turkey tail is my daughter's absolute favorite to ID. It's a really simple one for kids and it's really, really fun as well. So this is more for Winnie to take out when we go on our hikes. I got a really great ID book. That's probably what I will have with me, but this is just a quick reference chart for her. So she's not getting overwhelmed by taking out an entire ID book. And by putting it on the ring, I just stick this on a tack on our bulletin board and she can just grab it and go whenever we're heading out the door for a hike. One of the things you don't see on this picture of our unit study board is our question list. So that's actually something we're going to be doing this week. After we've chosen a unit study, we are going to make a question list, which is basically where we brainstorm all of the things that we want to know about mushrooms. 
And then we will write that down, put it on our unit study board, and just go down that list. Try to answer all of our deep burning questions about mushrooms. Um, if you guys want to follow along with our mushroom unit study, you can follow the link below to my Instagram account. And I'll create a little section that's just for our mushroom unit study so you can follow us along and see us hopefully answer those uh, burning questions or just get burnt out on our unit study and move on. Who knows? I really am trying to like go with the flow this year. So just head on over to that link and check us out. Now on to the books, the yummy, yummy books. Don't you guys love book recommendations? I do. And this is the part in the video where I'm going to share with you the books that are really going to be the spines of our unit study. I have four books to show you guys. I'm going to start at the books that I'm really just putting out for the kids to peruse through. This is to, again, get those uh, juices flowing in their brain, um, thinking about mushrooms. And then I have two other books that are really more of our studious books, right? Our studious books on uh, mycology that we're going to be looking at. Okay, let's get going. This first one's a big one. This is Fungarium, and this is by Katie Scott and Esther Gaia. This is a Welcome to the Museum book, if you've ever used these guys before, and I just picked this one up at our local library. I love it because it's huge. It really draws the kiddos in, and the illustrations are pretty great as well. I love illustrations that have the images with the little numbers because the kiddos choose something they're interested in and then we read about it. It's just kind of like a choose your own adventure, choose your own study. Some of this material is a little over their heads, but really it's just to um, be that intriguing little tidbit that gets them to chase down the rabbit hole um, of studying about fungus. It's just really pretty, right? I might have to get my own copy of this, but definitely for now, the libraries is uh, staying with us for a while, you know. All right, the next book is actually part of a book series that we have that I really love. Um, and those are anatomy series, and these are by Julia Rothman. Um, and she has a whole set of these, like food anatomy. Um, I think that she has one now that's anatomy of the sea. I don't know. If you've never seen these, nature anatomy, that's the one we're using. Look them up right now. They are absolutely gorgeous. So again, this is just a book that's for kiddo perusal, and we'll probably read a little bit of together. But this nature anatomy one, I mean, it goes over the layers of the earth. How cute are these illustrations? It also goes over different types of landscapes, okay? I love that as well. This is one that the kids can kind of pick and choose what they want to read about, and it's just a lot of info in one little text. And this section that's on mushrooms, course is gorgeous. It talks about mycelium. It has this basic mushroom anatomy image as well as like a mushroom life cycle. So I think that's going to be really awesome for us to take a look at. And then it does go into a little bit of detail looking at some of those marvelous mushrooms. I think these are really fun illustrations. And they don't have... They do not have chicken of the woods in this one, but they have hen of the woods, which is super delicious. I've only found this one one time, but tasty, tasty. So these are the two books that I'm keeping out just for the kids to take a gander at and kind of look through, flip through at their leisure. And then I have two books that I'm really using as like our more academic studying texts. And the first one, they're actually both DK books, which, oh, be still in my heart, love a good DK book, um, but they are definitely on different levels. So this first one is called Humongous Fungus, and this is by Lynn Body. I'm assuming that that's how you would, I don't know, pronounce that, but Humongous Fungus. And like a lot of the DK, DK books, they're beautifully illustrated. And they go over a lot of different elements of mushrooms in kind of a brief way that kids can really digest. So I like this one because it does show the growth of a mushroom and has all of the mycelium here. 
And I love this page because we actually have these mushrooms in our front yard, so I know that the kiddos are gonna love uh, that connection. And another page I wanted to show you from this book as well. First of all, I'm gonna just show you a lot of books, because or a lot of pages, because this is just adorable. But it has this really cool section about like the fungi that are inside of us and even on our skin, right? Because we definitely have this huge fear, or I think culturally we have this huge fear of mushrooms and fungus when in reality it's like the coolest thing ever like that's not an understatement so cool but also it shows you like you know home invaders when it is on our food and in our house and when it can be bad for us how it's turned into medicine um, and even different types of floating fungus so i know that the kids are going to absolutely love this book and the next one that I got, which is really our last um, academic one that I want to show you guys, this is also a DK book, but it's a lot more detailed. And this one's the one that I'll be definitely taking into the woods. This is Mushrooms, How to Identify and Gather Wild Mushrooms and Other Fungi. And it goes through a lot more detail. It also gives you some suggestions as to like what you could take with you on a foraging expedition. And this is going to be way better for ID for us. And I'll tell you what I really love about it. So here's like some images. It's using the real images of the mushrooms, but it's giving you a top view, kind of like a um, profile view, but also a cross section view, which I think is really important for helping you to get um, a really clear identification. And of course, I want to show you guys the chicken of the woods section because I want to throw up a picture here in a minute. That's some chicken of the woods we cooked recently. Okay. It's really showing you guys how it may look on the tree, what that cross section will look like, and also just describes um, everything about it, including its spore deposits which is going to bring me to the last thing I want to tell you guys about, and that is to give you some project ideas. So let's say you've watched the documentary, you've read the books, you've gone over the anatomy of a mushroom, and you're thinking, hmm, what now? Well, I'm gonna tell you what now. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get hunting, right? Or foraging. Go outside, I'm going to tell you, you are going to be stunned at how many different mushrooms your kids are gonna find. If you have eyes like me, which are not great, it can be pretty difficult to mushroom hunt. It takes me a lot of time. I have to be pretty methodical. But kiddos, they're lower to the ground, they've got sharper vision, and they're gonna find it all, and they're gonna have a blast doing it. Some suggestions. Definitely make sure if you are going to collect mushrooms to take back home, you want to do so in a basket or in some kind of ventilated or mesh bag. That is going to give you the best um, protection for your specimen, but also allow the mushroom to continue to drop its spores while you're in the forest or in the woods or in the grass or wherever it is that you find mushrooms under your deck, right? Um, and you can, you don't have to go out and find a basket or buy any like special mushroom bag off of Amazon or anything like that. You can actually use mesh bags that produce comes in. Like sometimes potatoes will come in those mesh bags or specifically onions will come in a mesh bag that you can really reuse for when you are foraging for mushrooms. Take your guide, right? Just get out there and see what you can find. Okay, so you've got yourself some specimens. You've brought them back home. Here's my second project idea for you, and that is going to be making spore prints. It's super easy to do. The kiddos love it, and it's usually, it's always interesting. So once you've brought your specimen home, if it's a cap style mushroom, you could just take that off and place the cap with the gills or pore side down onto a piece of paper. You let that set for a couple of hours or even overnight and allow the mushroom to drop its spores. And when you take that mushroom cap off, you are going to see a print, I'll put a picture here, of what those spores look like. And that is really going to help when it comes to IDing mushrooms that maybe have a lot of lookalikes because their spore color can be pretty unique. And this book here, 
This includes information about the spore colors of each mushroom so that if you're wanting to absolutely 100% make sure you're making a positive ID, um, you can do that using this text. Okay, you've foraged, you've done spore prints, but you're still just a little too cautious to take that next step in eating anything that you find from the woods. That's okay, you guys, all right? We don't all have to be like, you know, I don't know, throwing it down in the wild, trying to survive eating those mushrooms or anything like that. If that is still, you're too apprehensive or you have too much anxiety about it, it's just not gonna be a pleasant experience for you, that's all right. I think a fun activity could definitely be going to the grocery store, seeing all the different types of mushrooms that you can find there, having kids IDing them, and you know what they are because, uh, you know, it's on the label, but you can also buy grow kits off of Amazon, which I did. I will put an image of it here and link it down below. I bought a mini grow kit because we do forage a lot, but I've been really curious about these grow kits and how they work. So I just decided, well, we're doing a unit study, I'm gonna give it a shot. So that should be coming in this week and we'll go over that with the kiddos as well. All right, you guys, that's what we're going to be doing for our unit study this September, maybe longer, maybe less, who knows, we'll just see how it goes. If you wanna follow our journey on this mushroom unit study, make sure to head over to Instagram and you'll find our highlights there all about mushrooms. And you know what, guys? Is it perfect? No, baby, it ain't. It's never gonna be, okay? But is it done? Yeah, we're getting there, that's for sure. So until next time, bye.